Hey, Dr. Wilson here. I'm a PhD molecular biologist and welcome to my Disinformation Dozen series. The Disinformation Dozen are 12 influencers identified by the Center for Countering Digital Hate as being responsible for 65% of all anti-vaccine misinformation on the internet. And in this series, I'm going to show you why they deserve the title of Disinformation Dozen. In the first episode, I talked about Sayer G and how much he lies to his audience. In this installment, I'll be talking about his wife, Kelly Brogan, who does the same thing. In this video, I'll be addressing an article that Kelly wrote where she claims that flu vaccines are not only ineffective and dangerous, but they also make you depressed? Yeah, doesn't sound good. Let's get into it. Hi. I'm Dr. Kelly Brogan, and today I'd like to talk about an important new study that links the flu vaccine to incidences of depression and cognitive impairment through the vector of inflammation. Okay, let me set the scene a little bit for the research that Kelly Brogan is talking about here. The researchers in this paper wanted to test whether or not inflammation could cause features of depression in college students. So in order to do this, they tracked these students for a week before and a week after they got their influenza vaccine. Now, inflammation is a double-edged sword. It's absolutely necessary in the body for the immune system to function properly, but too much of it can also cause negative health effects. Keep in mind that inflammation is caused by lots of things. Inflammation is caused by natural infections. It's caused by drinking alcohol. It's caused by eating certain foods. So the point here is that this research is not specific to the flu shot. You cannot reference it and then say that the flu shot is bad and is going to make you depressed. That is a blatant misrepresentation of what these scientists went out to test. So the researchers were just using the flu shot in order to activate inflammation in a controlled way. And if you look at the actual data, most people in this study didn't really change all that much when it comes to their mood and other features of depression. But thanks to math and good science, we can actually see that there is a slight but significant decrease to people's overall mood in correlation with increased inflammation markers. So this research says that more inflammation might mean more depression. And remember, inflammation is caused by tons of things. And you're going to have a lot more inflammation if you actually get sick with the flu. So that's the first example of how Kelly Brogan completely misrepresents the science that she's talking about. But I want to also talk about the article that she wrote, because in it, she talks a lot about the flu vaccine and how it's bad for not only pregnant mothers, but babies. And this is really bad because Kelly Brogan is pretty popular in women's health circles. So it's important to address that as well. She starts off this article by making the tired claim that flu vaccines are notoriously ineffective. Of course, you've probably heard that flu vaccines can vary in their effectiveness year by year. Some years they can be more effective, some years they can have as little effectiveness as 20%. But a 20% effective flu vaccine still is really, really important. Why? It all has to do with the reproduction rate of influenza viruses. The reproduction rate of a virus, which is denoted as R0 in mathematical equations, represents how well the virus can spread from person to person. For example, if a virus has an R0 of 2 to 4, that means that, on average, a person who is infected with that virus is going to also infect 2 to 4 people. Influenza viruses, on average, have an R0 value of 1.2 to 1.4. That's really close to being less than 1, which is exactly what you want when you're trying to control the spread of a virus and reduce cases, illness, and death as much as possible. So if we have a year where an influenza virus has an R0 value of 1.2 and an influenza vaccine has 26% effectiveness, and enough people get that vaccine, we will effectively reduce that R0 value to less than one. This way, the virus is going to have a really hard time actually spreading from person to person. This effectiveness of the flu vaccine is measured by researchers in the real world all the time. Increased rates of flu vaccination always decreases hospitalizations and deaths due to influenza, no matter what year, no matter what country. And given that flu kills tens of thousands of Americans every year, this is pretty important. 
The next thing I want to talk about that Kelly writes in this article is when she says that the flu vaccine has not been adequately tested in pregnant women and that it's inherently dangerous to pregnant women and babies. This is completely not true and why, in my opinion, Kelly Brogan deserves the title of Disinformation Dozen. It becomes really obvious that she is deliberately misleading her audience when she includes a screenshot of a vaccine insert for Fluorix, which is a brand of flu vaccine. And the reason that this statement is in this insert is because it has not been directly tested in controlled clinical trials on pregnant women. But at the same time, Kelly Brogan ignores all of the research that has been done on pregnant women and flu vaccines. And altogether, they say that there is no increased risk of miscarriage or other complications associated with pregnant women who get the flu vaccine. In fact, pregnant women who get the flu vaccine are better protected because if they get the flu while pregnant, that is really bad both for the mother and the baby. Finally, of course, Kelly Brogan in this article claims that flu vaccines are dangerous because they are deadly. This is also not true. The papers that she cites in order to support this claim discuss data that at face value is concerning. Vaccines are constantly monitored for any adverse effects that might be going on in the population. And sometimes data picks up blips that look concerning. They warrant further investigation. But she doesn't tell you what that further investigation uncovers. In each case, further investigation into this data finds that there is no consistent link between vaccines and these fatal events. Flu vaccines are given to millions of people every single year all over the world. They have been extensively tested before coming to market and continue to be extensively monitored. We have so much data for flu vaccines that we can easily determine how safe and effective they are. And it is very clear if you look at all the data, which I have linked for you to read for yourself in the description below, that the flu vaccines are safe and effective. Are they free from adverse effects? No, nothing is. That doesn't mean they're not safe. The benefits that flu vaccines grant us in our fight against influenza, which is a huge public health problem every single year, greatly outweigh the risks that the vaccine carries. This article by Kelly Brogan is just full of anti-vaccine misinformation. Well, that's going to do it for the second installment of the Disinformation Dozen series. Kelly Brogan debunked absolutely deserves the title of Disinformation Dozen. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you want to join me for the rest of my series on the Disinformation Dozen, don't forget to subscribe so you can catch me next week for episode 3, where I'll be addressing Riza Islam. See you then.